why, why am I so against having extra fat in your diet? This study is one of the reasons why. This, uh, I, I call this the Egg McMuffin study. It's from 1997. And in red were the subjects in the study who ate a high fat diet. In this case, it was an Egg McMuffin. And, and you can see that, it, that this was a measure of their endothelial function. And the endothelium are just the lining, are the cells lining your blood vessels. And the function went down within an hour and it stayed down in this study for, for almost six hours. Where, so that's in red, whereas in blue was a low fat meal, didn't, didn't hurt the blood vessels. So the way I think about this, if you look at the way the average American eats, let's say they eat three meals a day and guess what? Most of them are fatty meals. So what they're doing is, it's as if they're taking a sledgehammer to their foot and causing damage there, but instead of to their foot, they're doing internal damage to their blood vessels. And now it is true, if, let, let me put it this way. If you're planning, if you're, you're if you say, Dr. Josh, I'm addicted to this fat, I'm not gonna change my diet, but what's something I can do uh, to improve my health? Well, one thing you could do is only eat one meal a day. Because if you eat like the worst possible, you know, let's say you eat two Egg McMuffins, a really unhealthy meal, but that's your only meal for the day, guess what? There'll be, there'll be a longer period of time for your blood vessels to recover. Now, I'm not suggesting that you, that be your diet, but I am saying this is one reason why people who eat one unhealthy big meal a day may have better health than people who are eating three medium-sized fatty meals a day. And here is just another study showing in this one, the damage to the blood vessels lasted eight hours. So, and yes, this, this is real. Uh, people are in shock when they, and, 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 I, and I apologize if people are sensitive who are seeing this. This is what we call sludge blood. So if you eat a fatty meal, whether it's a meal with olive oil or a meal, a meal with butter or an egg McMuffin, whatever it is. And so you eat the meal and then within 10 minutes of eating the meal or 20 minutes or 30 minutes, I draw blood from you. And then I put the blood in a test tube and look at the test tube. This is what we're going to see. We're going to see the fat layers out. And it turns out that that sludge increased viscosity and your heart has to work harder uh, what, what happens if you look under a microscope, the red blood cells stack up and they form what are called rouleaux. And uh, the rouleaux are just stacks and it's harder for, your, for it to go through your, your blood vessels. Another thing is when you eat a fatty meal like this and you have sludge blood, your blood oxygen goes down between five and 10%. So this is a real effect, but it's something you can't see because normally you're not taking your blood out after you eat a fatty meal. But if you could, you may change your behavior. Okay, so this is another study. A single high fat meal provokes pathological, which just means abnormal erythrocyte, which means red blood cell remodeling and increases myeloperoxidase levels. Implications for acute coronary syndrome or, or heart disease. So from this study, they, they, they looked and they said, what, why is it? Why is it that eating a high fat meal causes problems? And it's not just the sludge blood. You actually get change in the shape because red blood cells are, not, are normally nice and curved, biconcave, and they can easily go through blood vessels. But after a fatty meal, the red blood cell, the fat changes the surface of the red blood cells, and now there are spikes. And the spikes are what do does the damage when you eat a fatty meal. So this is from a fatty meal. 
I've got an interesting slide for you next. This is from a, a clinic I work in uh, with patients with mold toxicity. It's a clinic near Tampa, Florida called Spinaga Wellness. And at this clinic, this is one of our patients, you can see the same spikes because for mold toxicity, the mold toxins have, have this fatty toxin that does the exact same thing to your red blood cells. Okay, so I've heard, I've heard people say, oh yeah, yeah, what um, oil can't be that bad. You know, I'll just, I'll just have some of it. Well, one of the key ways when I'm counseling people on how to lose weight, and, and I, I learned this from True North and, and in, in my life, I learned it from Chef AJ years ago. And I know she's also, she's an amazing speaker and, and she's also speaking later in this conference. Uh, but specifically, does anyone there know what the, the, the caloric density of oil is? All right, Colleen. Colleen knows it's 4,000. Yeah, it's crazy. It's 4,000 calories a pound. It's the highest thing there is. So my point to everyone is you want to avoid adding oil to your diet. So I've got another interesting, I think it's a funny story. Because like, like many of you, I used to be addicted to oil. In fact, I grew up, I grew up uh, at restaurants like Carabas, you know, where they would you know, before the meal, they would bring out the bread and they would bring out the olive oil, but they say, oh, we don't, here, we don't call this olive oil, we call this Italian butter. And I, this is a funny story for me because decades ago, like 30 years ago, I remember going to Rome, Italy with my dad and we went to, you know, a nice, you know, a nice Italian restaurant and um, on the table, they, they put bread and on the table, there were little, I should say little, canisters of oil and vinegar. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to dip my, you know, Italian bread in this Italian olive oil, just like I did in the restaurant back in the United States. So I did that. And, you know, my dad looked at me like, what are you doing? It's like, oh, I like it. And, and within two minutes, the waiter comes by and he, the Italian waiter, and he grabs the bottle of olive oil from the table. So I'm like, whoa. So it's interesting how we've, in this, in this country, United States, we've taken, we've kind of taken customs from, or food from the other world, but our way is, is to supersize this. And um, obviously the waiter was not happy that I was um, using too much oil. So it, part, part of this joke to me is the, the American version of the Mediterranean diet is just, add olive oil to everything, and then it's the Mediterranean diet. I'm just saying from a health perspective, it doesn't work. So here's another idea on, uh, on the marketing side, and that is, for whatever reason, um, it's filtered down to the popular conception that fried food probably isn't healthy. But if you take that same fried, same fried chicken and you call it crispy, that's now healthy. And if you look now, if you watch the commercials, no, nothing's fried anymore. Everything's just crispy. So you just have to understand there's manipulation going on. And the purpose of my lecture today is to manipulate you to, to truly eat on the healthy side. So you might say, well, Dr. Josh, you know, are, are there any uses for olive oil that, you know, and actually there's some good medicinal uses for olive oil. Let me give you some examples. There are studies that if you have arthritis and you rub olive oil on those joints, you know, you have a shoulder that's, that's bad, you rub it on, the inflammation there will go down. So, and hey, give it a try. You know, I, I don't see any downside. Or, you know, sure, you can, you can use olive oil on your, on, on your hair. But, but my, point, my point is you don't want to be adding extra olive oil or other oils to your food. Okay, but I know you might be saying, I love, I love the comment here, the waiter saved my life. <laughs> so true. All right. So, um, but I thought oil, especially olive oil, was healthy to eat. Well, okay. So, so they're looking like, when would you ever recommend oil? 
Okay, so like if you have someone severely malnourished who needs to gain weight quickly, yeah, I could see how oil would be one way to gain weight quickly. Um, here's another thing. If, if you look, you can find published studies that show that olive oil is healthier than butter. The key with all these studies, you have to say, compare to what? And I agree. Eating all, if, if you say, Dr. Josh, I have a choice. I can either put olive oil on my bread or I can put butter. I would agree. Olive oil is going to be, you know, less bad than the butter. But my point is, as you make a change, you know, you, you, want, to, you want to transition away from both. And again, as you heard in the introduction, it took me, it took me years to make this transition. So I don't judge other people because I know for myself, it took a long time. But, but no, don't, don't, don't be set with the misconception that olive oil is a health food. And let's talk now about the olive, I'm sorry, the oil paradox. Because I've just told you that, that the oil in your diet is toxic. Well, here's, here's the paradox. There are certain oils, like essential oils, that can be beneficial. And that's the word can be, if they're used correctly. So I'm not, and, and let's, let me also take a step back and say, look, if you're eating whole plants, and this is what people are worried, well, where am I going to get my fat from if, you know, my healthy fat, if, if I'm eating plants, guess what? Whole plants are alive. By de definition, if there are live cells in there, there have to be fats and lipids in the cell membranes that surround the cells in that plant. So, so it's not that if you just eat plants, you're not going to get any fats. It's just you're not going to get, you're, you're going to limit to what you actually need. So, so what are examples of, uh, what, what am I talking about with um, essential oils? And, and really, what's the difference between dietary and essential oils? Well, there, there are many differences. One difference is the dose. Because, you know, when you cook with one or two tablespoons of oil to, to fry it or to make it crispy, that's actually 300 to 600 drops. Whereas with essential oils, if you're using it for therapeutic and medicinal reasons, two drops, you know, two drops versus 300 or 400 drops you can see there's an order of magnitude difference. What's another difference? Another is the biological activity. So, so we just heard that, you know, olive oil and these other oils will cause red blood cells to deform. That's not a good biological activity. Whereas, and I, and I know this is, a, this is a very busy, very busy slide. And, and uh, but just to let you know that the reason these are essential oils that have been used uh, in the treatment of obesity. And specifically, um, you can see here, there are many different pathways, whether it's the brain or the stomach. Uh, and listed here, there are a ton of different oils that have different effects on different steps. Uh, you know, some, some of them will, will stop you from having appetite. Some of them will stop uh, the fat from building up. Um, so it's complicated and, and, and guess what? It's not unique to the obesity issue. Our bodies are complicated. The, the biochemical pathways, there are many steps and, and I'm, I'm all for, you know, trying reductionism and trying to say, Hey, let's keep it simple. Let's find one pathway and find one drug that stops that one pathway. And let's just hope that fixes all the problems. And you know what? Unfortunately, in many times, it doesn't for these chronic diseases. Because look, really, if there was a magic pill that you could take and just reverse and get rid of all these chronic diseases, I'd be all for that pill. I'm just telling you that pill doesn't exist. Mm -hmm.